internet for providing this platform for the e pg teaching of all the students so i welcome you all for e gurukul patshala the most favorite program of all the pg students across the india uh today we have the case discussion on the nervous system and uh, for this we are having the institute joined with us is bj medical uh, college amdavad and presenter is dr abhishek singh rajput he is second year uh, pg student from the institute his mentor is dr charul mehta she is associate professor at the institute we for today's session we have two renowned expert faculties dr nitish vora uh, sir is, is a, a pediatric uh, neurologist at ricn uh, institute royal institute of child neurosciences uh, sir is uh, his special interest is in the epilepsy brain injury and autism and uh, he is ex consultant at the great ormond street hospital for uh, children in uk and lcnc that is lilavati child neuro care center sir is chief organizing secretary of neuro uh, pedicon 2006 amdavad chief organizing secretary of child neurocon 2022 uh, eb of aopn from 18 to 20 and uh, eb of aocn from 16 18 20 to 22 and this time i think uh, uh, secretary for aopn amdavad in 2023 so many international publication on his name welcome sir thank you very much thank you very much we have dr anand keshwan as a second expert sir is professor of pediatrics at gmc thrissur and uh, he is he, he was iap national vice president in 2020 and uh, past national president and secretary of iap neurology chapter he is chief editor of iap textbook of pediatric radiology frontiers in pediatric neurology and recent advances in neonatology sir is a national convener uh, and the uh, of the iap pg quiz program since 21 so since last 4 years sir is the national coordinator or convener of the pediatric pg quiz welcome sir uh, we have baldev sir with us for always guiding us through the journey of learning we all are learning we all are his student students and uh, so abhishek all the best to you for today's presentation so jinal goel is a 6 year old female child born in hindu community out of non consanguineous marriage with lower middle social economic scale as per modified kupu swami classification residing at naroda ahmedabad presented with complaints of backache since 7 days increased frequency of urination since 5 days pain weakness and inability to walk since 2 days the above mentioned complaints were described by the reliable informant being mother for similar complaint patient was directly brought to civil hospital ahmedabad for further management of the same uh, history of the progressive illness patient was relatively asymptomatic 7 days ago then developed back ache which was of gradual onset progressive in nature was continuous and dull aching initially it was present over upper back later had progressed to involve lower region it was more during night radiating to lower limbs and relieved partially by over the counter medications and rest and was not associated with any postural variation along with that there was also presence of increased frequency and urgency of micturition not associated with any diurnal variation there was gradual onset of pain and weakness in both lower limbs which was progressive initially it was present in right limb later had progressed to involve both limbs there was presence of sharp Your yeah, um, your internet connection is not uh, proper. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. History of uh, progressive illness. Patient was relatively asymptomatic seven days ago. Then developed a gradual onset of progressive backache, which was continuous, dull aching. Initially over upper back. Later had progressed to involve lower region. Was more during night, radiating to lower limbs, and relieved partially by over the counter medications and rest, and was not associated with any postural variation. 
Ration also developed increased frequency and urgency of micturition, not associated with any diurnal variation. There was also a development of gradual onset of progressive pain and weakness in both lower limbs, which was initially in right limb and later had progressed to involve both limbs. There was presence of sharp pain, more over proximal than distal limb, not associated with any diurnal variation, causing the patient to have inability to walk with frequent falls. Vishak, I think, can you just stop sharing? Uh, you say that six years away and started with the backache. I think some yes, of the back, backache is not the common complaint or symptom of pediatric OPD. So let us first evaluate that how we'll go in the details of this complaint. Who will take it? Suppose backache is a complaint. How will you try to go in the details of it? which will provide you some clue that what is the likely problem. Uh, so even, I, even, even others can take. Dr. Aditi was there. Aditi, can you take it? Dr. Aditi? Okay. Suppose you are sitting in the OPD and the patient yes, comes to you as already Abhishek has described that six years old female. Let us first focus only on the complaint of the back end. Then what other questions you will ask to the mother or information you will try to derive, which may give you some idea that what is the likely problem for this making? Sir, I'll ask for a history of any recent trauma. Very good. I think that you should ask the history of trauma. Absolutely. Very good. Next point. Okay. Anything else? Uh, sir, associated any deformity should be looked at. Deformity uh, associated. Okay, yes, spine. very good. Suppose the deformity is there and now the pain, that will also, that may, deformity may be congenital or deformity later on developed, acquired. In that way also, we can try to elaborate. And that will, can we just give some basic uh, points that suppose uh, deformity, then how it signifies? What does it indicate? Suppose deformity is there in some other patient. Yes, sir. Uh, presence of deformity in any form, such as prominence of the uh, posterior element of vertebral process, such okay. uh, would indicate presence of kyphus or knuckle, as in uh, pod spine, that is a uh, tubercular infection of the spine. Very good. Yes, it can be. Even maybe the suppose acquired, as you are thinking, that may be the pod spine or tuberculosis. Even the congenital deformity can also be there. Later on, go for the compression or some problems and be present to you with the back end. Very good. But as for the deformity or look for the deformity, history of trauma, very good. What about other points? I think Meda is there to help all of you. I know her that uh, already she has passed the MD and a very good, I will say, bright student when she was interacting and discussing with me as a postgraduate. So I'm sure that she'll be able to help you and contribute a lot. But first, I would like to interact with the students, those who are preparing so that uh, they can have some better ideas. Good evening. Yes, good evening, Meda. Nice to see you. Abhishek, further anything? Yes, sir. Uh, presence of uh, uh, either uh, associated complaints uh, should also be looked at. Okay. Uh, the quality of uh, the pain should be uh, ascertained from the patient or the informant, whether the patient has uh, dull aching pain or if uh, there is presence of uh, a sharp shooting pain. Also, uh, the uh, uh, presence of uh, uh, other symptoms such as uh, any uh, pus discharge from nearby site or any okay. other history uh, should be elicited. Right. In the patient, uh, which would guide for further etiology of the patient. Suppose, suppose some other patient give the history in this way that the backache is there or pain at the back, and there is some eruptions also, skin eruptions. What will be our thoughts? And they say that in some defined area. Nowhere else. The pain is, uh, it, pain, is pain is particularly rather than, you know, patient will pain is at the back, not necessarily always related to what will be another structure, neurological. But the pain, and particularly when even when the mother complains, or you even you may look at that, yes, that is the back when the patient is complaining of pain or that pain was since last two, three days, 
Later on, this skin eruptions has developed and very bad pain. But it can be. Uh, the history of varicella zoster should be elicited. Yeah, so so can Finger. be the can be the happy zoster. Of course, yes. later on we will come to know. So the what are the other points? Suppose if you are if you are suspecting that it is a likely neurological pain, then what other questions will ask so that it will strengthen your possibility? Yes, this is more suggesting neurological pain. Uh, quality of pain uh, should be ascertained from okay. the patient or informed. Right. Uh, uh, the neuropathic pain is classical sharp or shooting pain, which okay. uh, is not relieved easily either by rest or positional variation. Okay. Uh, presence of radiation of pain to uh, uh, lower limbs. Should, Absolutely. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, guide towards the. Uh, what 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 you want to describe in your in your case that it was later on upper than the lower going even to the lower limbs. Right. I think we have the two experts. They are waiting. You will come to the last and they will add the points. But before that, I want from the students. Okay. But anything else? Even one more point, which will make it very strong to consider the yes, it is neurological and nothing else. What other point you will ask? Probably patient may not complain. But if you ask them, they will say, yes, yes, sir, it is there. Is there any variation in the pain? With some specific, uh, I will say, body uh, body reactions, or some uh, I will say natural physiological uh, phenomenon in the form of suppose anybody. I think before I speak, I want to sensitize you. That if you speak, that is good. I think now so many students are there. That's good. I hope that Dr. Sunita is a student. Dr. Aditi is already there, but I, I, I could see that she is in the some intensive care unit working. So, have you said any point? Uh, so, presence of associated bowel or bladder disturbances. Okay, before that, be, before that, you know, mother, suppose the child is six years old child, six years old child can complain. That, suppose I will put it, you know, somebody has put the headache. Of course, headache, then probably maybe the central or system in neurological, but you know, if it is localized to only neurological, peripheral neurological, then may not be the headache. But you know, suppose the, some pain increases during certain, I would say, body actions, natural. During the coughing, during the sneezing, suppose the pain is more, what does it indicate? Even the suppose if the person is bending, then also the pain increases. That means body some moments. How it contributes, I think we learn from the expert, but at least give these thoughts or ideas to that, that how we can elaborate. Suppose fever is there. As well as symptoms, fever is there. Very important point. What does it indicate? It indicates ongoing inflammation uh, in the Suppose body. I, I hope you, in your patient you have not complained of fever. No, sir. There was no any history of fever yeah, in the patient. That's the, that's the point. And suppose in some other another patient, all these complaints, but a fever is there. Then yes, does sir. it make that any would... difference in your thought process? Uh, it sir, in cases of this is Abhishek first always you and then Meda. Uh, sir, it would uh, make a difference in the etiology uh, of the pain uh, described. Right. That would right. uh, favor to, fever would favor to, more towards possibility of infection or right. active inflammation in the body. Absolutely. That more of the inflammation may be infective, may be non-infective inflammation, but some inflammation is going on. Yes, Meda, you had... Uh, Contributing something, your comment? Sir, uh, during coughing and sneezing, a raised ICP uh, can also Absolutely. be associated with Absolutely. the same. Absolutely. Now, I think this is one complaint. Uh, before we go far further, I think at the last, uh, our experts will add, frequency of urine, you said frequency, urgency, all the things. What does it indicate? 
So but if I say that it is not urinary infection because there is no fever and all other, which is common, and with the complaint of backache and with all these points, you are correlating with some neurological condition. Straight away, if I come to the point, what does it indicate? Suppose if it is related to the neurological problem. Uh, the increased frequency and urgency of micturition in relation to neurological com uh, component indicates a detrusor instability or a overactive bladder causing uh, uh, such complaints in this patient. Okay. Number one, detrusor muscles, is it neurological problem or local the detrusor muscle itself? Uh, sir, it is a, a, a local... Uh, uh, muscular involvement more than uh, rather than a uh, component of uh, neurological uh, disease. Okay, now third point, as you have described in detail, that the pain, the weakness, inability to walk, starting as you said in the lower limbs, one initially, then further it had progress. Right. What does it indicate? What is your interpretation from this complaint? Uh -huh. What, what do you consider? What type of problem it is? Uh, sir, uh, if it is a neurological disease, it is a progressive or uh, involuting uh, uh, disease no, Abhishek, process. Abhishek, my first point is always try to give the thought. So suppose person is not able to walk, then a certain that is it due to some pain or is it really due to some neurological involvement? It is a, due to pain also the person cannot walk. Can you give some example that your person is not able to walk due to the pain? Uh, sir, uh, an uh, active inflammation of muscles such as myositis. Yeah, or, uh, that is the best example for us. That here this, there may not be the neurological problem. Right. What we say the weakness. Right. That in the terms of this neurological. Here probably not able to walk due to the pain. And then our whole thought will be different. Always try to differentiate when the person complains of inability to walk, try to go in the details. Is it due to the pain? The reason is, you know, our approach will be quite different. And if once we decide that it is not due to the pain, but definitely due to the involvement of some neurological component, our thought process will be quite different. The reason is, you know, we'll be on the right track for our thought process and making the diagnosis. So always the first point we should try to define in this way. Now, in that case, what, what is your thought process? What is this weakness or inability or uh, walking due to what? Uh, sir, uh, there was no any relation between uh, the uh, duration of pain with relation uh, to the patient not able to walk. Right. There were instances in during which uh, the patient Though was uh, asymptomatic regarding the from pain, still uh, the patient had difficulty in walking. Yeah, and what what is the another thing? You know, always to put the multiple adjectives with this. You say started how acutely or uh, even the insidious onset? How it started? Have you said? Uh, yeah, the patient had a uh, insidious onset. Uh, of the complaint. Yeah, then what is static or progressive? Uh, sir, it was progressive. Was it on one side or bilateral? Uh, sir, initially the patient had complained over right lower limb. However, uh, uh, later it had progressed to involve both the limbs. Right. Whether it is really in the form of the sub patchy or symmetrical? Uh, sir, the patient had uh, uh, asymmetrical patchy uh, involvement. Uh, was the uh, presenting complaint in this patient. Okay. Now, I think having this background, let us go to the experts. That how you should take it further. You have taken the very nice one, that six years old female. Total duration of some six, seven days. Right, started with the backing, which already we have gone in the details. Later, some urinary complaints. And already what we discussed at the weakness, Probably it's a neurological rather than due to the pain. And here it started from the lower limbs. There probably it has bilateral problem. It is gradually increasing or progressing, right? And there is no fever. Now, if you put all the symptoms together, now always ask the questions to ourselves. 
that where is the anatomy? Suppose if you are thinking for this neuro neurological problem, then where is the problem? Where is the anatomy? Second question always try to define what does it indicate? What is the likely pathology? Is it due to the trauma? Is it due to the infection? Is it due to some vascular problem? Is it some space occupying or degenerative or whatever? Right, from the characteristic. And then possible etiology, probably which may not be able to decide. So from only these three probably complaints or the evaluation further of these uh, problems, if you, if you make it, probably we can come to some fairly good conclusion. I think before we go now, uh, let us take one by one. Uh, Dr. Anand, you can start it and Nitesh, please, how we should go further, you can guide us. Yeah, thank you, sir. So here, if a child is having weakness only, then we can think about uh, three, four important possibilities in a child. But here, child weakness with the bladder involvement, the, the DD will further narrow. And uh, now there's pain also in the specific area. So it is very much narrowed. What is the lesion? But for purpose of discussion for a PG class, we have to think about all the other possibilities. So what are the possibilities for producing a low limb weakness, bilateral low limb weakness in a short span of seven days? That you have to think about. I think so we have to add so many negative history and so many positive, positive history to say against other diagnosis, not support your, I think the support diagnosis, uh, support effect is already there because you already mentioned about the bladder, you already mentioned about the pain and uh, they start mentioning about the details about the pain and everything. And also weakness also we want little more detail. So I think uh, by history of present illness and the more naive history, I think he is about to talk. After that, I think uh, we, can more, we can go for further discussion because uh, 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 because what uh, here you are getting a weakness of both limb. Uh, so Abhishek, what are the possibilities you think in our setup, in our ward, in a child with this one? What are the possibilities you think about a lower limb weakness? Uh, sir, first a possibility of uh, acute flaccid paralysis uh, should be considered. Uh, secondary to gullian barre syndrome, more commonly rather than uh, poliomyelitis. Uh, second possibility should be thought of uh, uh, post- uh, uh, viral uh, uh, post uh, uh, vaccination uh, myelitis, uh, certain uh, demyelinating disorders such as transverse myelitis, or uh, in older children, possibility of tapes dorsalis, or, uh, uh, or, or should be uh, sought. The history should be sought in the uh, patient. And you can answer about the, what you mentioned earlier about tuberculous pain also. You already mentioned about that one also. So. And uh, one thing we have to make sure, it is something involving spinal cord and uh, below, not the upper part of the story. So very rarely we will get the weakness of the both the lower limb involvement theoretically. So what are the possibility for uh, brain? Because we have everything we discuss about uh, spinal cord below, what are the rare, rare, rare possibility? Uh, so, uh, so what are the possibility will get a paraplegia due to some upper uh, involvement? Uh, sir, uh, the upper motor neuron lesion, such as uh, any intracranial space occupying lesion in form of uh, any uh, kind of infection, such as uh, tuberculoma or any neurocystic sarcosis. Uh, or, uh, we have to specify because it is, we are getting more lower limb weakness only. So you have to think about uh, some angiospinal artery, some meningioma in the lesion, parasagittal area. Very rare. That is how you mentioned. So, that lesion you can because you can compatibly roll out and also there is no history of your also. So now our point is focus of winding is in the lower limb only. And uh, you, you mentioned very good, nicely mentioned about three, four important posts for that involvement you already mentioned. Now our idea is that we have to narrow down. It is not the really William Barry, it is not transverse major, it is not this one, it is not, and it is this one. That yeah. you have to, so you have to give so many native history and you have to give so many. Positive history in favor of your diagnosis. That I is think a, for, uh, further history points may help him. We have yeah. restricted to only the two yeah. slides only. Nitish, can you just focus on this? Uh, then we'll go for the uh, rest of the part of the history. Uh, sure. Uh, no, Abhishek, you are doing uh, very good so far. And uh, congratulations to you. Uh, you're good girls to answer uh, everything. 
Uh, I think important part is, as you said, and what Dr. Anand Keshwan sir said and uh, Baldev sir said. So if you have pain, does it have a, le a level? So like above this level, there is no pain, there's maximum pain at specific level or it's a diffuse or everything below specific level is gone or something. So with pain, you can think of uh, what's, what else is involved. Uh, bladder is also bowel involved or not. And you're trying to say it's increased frequency and uh, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, urgency and frequency. Uh, does it, this child has a dribbling or uh, incontinence, those kind of things you can try from the history as well. Uh, what Baldesar was trying to also say with the body movement, especially if you're problem with the neck movement, coughing, so it can be either raised ICP or even if you have syrinx. So if syrinx, that's your uh, spinal canal, if it's a fluid, uh, it also gets pumped in from the brainstem area. So it gets widened and you get pain during that period. So anything uh, to do with posturing, coughing, neck movement or hip movement. So I think that those are other important aspects you want to know. Um, uh, and uh, with each thing, uh, the weakness, so whether it's weakness is distal or proximal. So it's low limb weakness, but it's more distal or proximal. That's something you can differentiate from the history. So how do you differentiate it's a distal weakness, proximal weakness, or it's a full, um, it's generalized weakness from the history. <laughs> uh, sir, presence of uh, weakness uh, during fine motor movements would uh, uh, dignify more towards uh, distal weakness. So that's However, how uh, you ask if I'm a patient. Means I understand your means what you're trying to say, but you're taking the history. So what would you ask child or mother to differentiate that's a distal or proximal? Uh, I, I, think uh, I think Abhishek, I, I will take the help of other your friends. Sure. Okay, and uh, uh, because uh, please number one keep your video on so that i can identify the person even i not only by the name but by the face also and uh, you know that's the only way of the learning if we go for the interactions then probably we can have it yes dr arti has probably made the point so arti can you uh, try to respond to the question from Dr. Nitish, what he made. That oh, can you, can you suppose, suppose what was the question? I'm sure that just I will remind. What he said that lonely weakness we are talking. <laughs> that that can be due to the, some proximal reasons or the distal some problems. Now, how will you try to derive the points from the history from which you can say that this is suggesting the weakness of the proximal or this is the weakness due to the distal pathology? Uh, sir, so if the child has difficulty, uh, if the child has difficulty in stepping up or difficulty in uh, uh, climbing the stairs, it will be proximal muscle weakness more commonly because uh, for that child has to uh, flex the thigh part. And uh, if the distal muscle weakness is there, a uh, child won't be able to uh, wear his slippers. If we ask a mother uh, that child was previously wearing slippers or chappers by his own and now child is not able to wear the slippers, that shows more of distal muscle weaknesses. I think that's that's right. Right. Nitesh, you can take it further. Please. Yes, you're right. So proximal, you have problem with either staircase or even sit to stand. Uh, that child is problem stand, right. from sitting to standing. And distal, as you said, uh, wearing or maintaining slippers. Uh, or not able to uh, grasp things um, with the feet or something like that. So that's very important whether it's proximal or distal, right? Uh, and that can also differentiate few things and also whether it's a full generalized weakness. So now it's full leg is floppy. Um, so as Sir said, whether it's a proximal, distal, one side, both side or patchy. And so that, that gives something. Uh, also important thing, uh, whether it radiates from the back, whether it relates to the side of the body or lower limbs, especially with any movement. So if the radiation, I mean, radiation of pain occurs, does it signify something? Or sharp shooting pain at specific side of the back, that there's a shooting pain at specific side of the back. I think we, we are just trying to get the lesion level. Sometimes patients yeah. able to say specifically, like exactly they can pinpoint uh, with the finger with the back here it's 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 a pain and it can be because of so many things not for this patient but say like uh, some waging compression of uh, spinal cord at that stage 
or transversalities or those kind of areas where you have specific localized pain. And then it, it can shoot down to the limbs as well. So, uh, well done, Arti. Thank you. So, I think uh, while we are taking more time in the history, still only two slides we have completed. It is said in the neurology that if you go for the very good history, probably 80% of your diagnosis will be revealed. And after examination, just you want to confirm that what I'm expecting, whether my findings are there accordingly or not. And then you can confirm your diagnosis, clinical diagnosis, almost it is said that more than 90% of clarity will be there. And 10% by the investigation just for confirmation. So I think this is very, very important. It is so in every, as I will say, system in clinical medicine, but more specific in neurological case. And all of you know that neurological case is usually the major uh, long case in the MD examination, and even in DNP. Recently, I was in DNP, and I know that they were insisting that as far as possible, keep the neurological case. So I, and probably here, if the, uh, the I would say, the resident is really very competent, very clear. In neurological, it becomes very easy rather than to, in nervous system, or I was I will say, cardiovascular system, murmur, and cyanosis may get a lot of, I will say, subjective problems and confusions. In neurology, that is some more clarity is there. So please, uh, I think Abhishek, you can go further with your history part. Again, we'll be back for the discussion. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, uh, the patient didn't have any history of trauma, fever, convulsion, uh, prolonged standing at school, any history of diarrhea or vomiting, sore throat, ear discharge, uh, any history of neck swelling or rash. Patient didn't have any history of recent intramuscular injection or immunization, any history of uh, snake bite or scorpion sting, or any remote history of dog bite. There was no any history of uh, any uh, unknown substance ingestion, poisoning, or casery dal ingestion, with no any history of similar complaints in past or prior hospitalization. In birth history, the patient's uh, mother had a routine antenatal care at a government hospital at UNA, and the patient had an uneventful uh, natal history. The patient was born full term, uh, vagina delivered, and was cried soon after birth, with no any history of NICU admission, and was immunized with birth vaccine at birth. In family history, the patient is third in birth order, born out of a non-consignous marriage with the previous two elder siblings who are asymptomatic, with no any family history of either similar complaints, diabetes, hypertension, any history of epilepsy, hypothyroidism, tuberculosis, or uh, anyone on chronic medications. Uh, in diet history, the patient uh, follows a vegetarian diet and has a calorie deficit of 17%, and a protein uh, deficit of 25% with BMI of uh, 12 uh, kilogram per uh, meter square with uh, uh, having a uh, severe undernutrition as per uh, IP uh, classification. Uh, the patient is uh, immunized up to booster one and had BCG scar present over uh, left arm. There was uh, no any history of uh, uh, developmental delay or dissociation, the patient was uh, developmentally normal and had achieved all the milestones as per age. Uh, sir, uh, the patient uh, was examined uh, in uh, under well lighted. Okay, I well think you can you can just uh, wait for a minute and stop sharing. Yes, sir. Because uh, history part will complete, and uh, I've taken the photo of your negative point so that I can remember that what negative points you have mentioned. Uh, Dr. Anand was also insisting that you should have the several points in the negative or positive that would help you. I think you can just try to answer. No history of trauma, I think it is understood, right? Fever, already we have discussed. In what way the conversion is important or how it will help you, what I mean to say. Suppose yes, history of convulsions, no history of convulsions how it will help you to decide some very specific point. Sir, presence of paralysis uh, just after conversion would signify the uh, presence of towards paralysis, which uh, occurs uh, after uh, an episode of conversion. It would also signify that the site of lesion would be uh, in the brain, 
in the cerebral cortex, causing the patient to develop uh, paraparesis. And uh, the presence of uh, conversion would uh, also signify the, any uh, upper motor neuron involvement in the patient. Now the point is, the way which probably we are discussing in your history points, uh, do you think that the taught paralysis should be kept in differential diagnosis or possibility? Uh, no, sir. For this patient, uh, there was no any uh, history of conversion at all. So, Toad's paralysis would not be uh, yes, uh, would be kept as a differentiating feature. Okay. And the reason is, you know, why I'm asking, always the negative or positive points cover relevant to your case. And the point should be in such a way selected that presence or absence helps you either to strengthen your possibility or to exclude the nearby differentials or even to exclude some possible complication in the given case. So I think the point should be selected in this way. Otherwise, you know, it becomes uh, many a times in the exam uh, difficult or we may invite the trouble by some of the points. Okay, but I, I'm sure that ultimately experts will take the point. Prolonged standing at school again, uh -huh. So that would uh, differentiate for possibility of disc prolapse uh, in this patient. Case of spondylolysis. On the contrary, always I advise the students, don't invite the trouble in the exam. You know, by uh, putting these type of the points, where on the contrary, examiner wants to protect us. But we are inviting the trouble that now you come on. And suppose some examiner, examiner comes on, then probably it creates a problem. Why I will say we should put such a point where probably the story does not indicate any remote possibility of the condition. Anyway, but it happens and I think it's good that you have put over here. So in the exam, you will not put it. That's good. What is the importance of sore throat? Why purposefully uh, you ask for the sore throat? For presence uh, or absence, how it makes difference? Uh, so presence of a uh, uh, sore throat, uh, sir, actually I was uh, uh, differentiating the feature of uh, uh, diphtheria, a case okay. of acute uh, membrane tonsillo pharyngitis. Along with that, I had uh, asked the history of any presence of neck swelling causing a uh, polyneuropathy. Uh, in this patient, sir. Again, I will. Uh, I would like to go to some other friends also. They are Dr. Aditi, Arti, anybody? Whether they are uh, there to answer? Please keep your video on. I don't know why. Your faces are very good on the contrary. Nice to see all of you. Yes, Dr. Sandeep is there. Sandeep, let us take one point what uh, Abhishek has mentioned. So he, he, was yes, thought, he was mentioning the sore throat, particularly from the diphtheria point of view. And that means the post diphthetic polyneuropathy, what as a part of complication, I think he wants to exclude also. Now, do we, how this uh, post diphthetic polyneuropathy patient will present? Common presentation, let us forget uncommon. Commonly, some of the patient had the diphtheria in the past, and now as a part of complication, patient has come to you with the post diphtheric polyneuropathy. From which of the presentation strata you would consider, oh, this is likely post diphtheritic. That is common presentation. Yes, very good. Somebody has put the parietal palsy. The parietal palsy. So how the patient will come with the parietal palsy? What will the complaint? Regurgitation. Okay, regurgitation. There may, there may be the major regurgitation. Anything else? Voice change. Voice changes. What will be the voice changes? Voice change in the voice, yes, but what type of change? Sir, nasality will be lost. Sorry, Aditi, I think uh, your voice is not clear. What I mean to say, voice change, is it hoarseness or something else? What changes you will get in? Because already, of the voice. But because already you said that is a parietal palsy. 
with the parental palsy, suppose voice is what will be the change in the voice? That will be the nasal twang. Yes, sir. Yes, right. You should say like that nasal twang, then difficulty in swallowing, major regurgitation. And this indicates what does it indicate? Where is the problem? That means which which type of the problem? Which nerves are affected? Let us come to the specific point. Sir, ninth glossopharyngeal no? Okay. And later on, but probably, but probably but such, but a, such a patient may go for even the head lag or even the respiratory problems, and then you will think, oh, this is post diphtheritic, right? Whether is it uh, known that they will start from these lower limbs and then progressive and symmetrical and like that? Okay, this is one point. I will take in some other way. Suppose if I am thinking even the GPS, does it help me the presence of sore throat? Yes, yes or no? Aditi? Yes, sir. And the weakness. So what I mean to say that one patient complains of some sore throat, a respiratory infection, few days, few weeks back. And now it has presented to me with this type of neurological condition. I'm thinking of the gullian barry syndrome. Does that point of infection, upper respiratory infection, can I link with this neurological complication? Is there any importance what I mean to say? Or in other way, in other way, now enumerate the various points in the past which we may consider that having the relationship with the complication in the form of the GPS. That is the post infective kind. Yes. Inflammation has started. So, which condition? One is this respiratory infection. Anything else? Uh, yeah, okay, what we say. So what GI infection, how the patient has presented in the past? History of? Uh, history of uh, Campylobacter jejuni infection. Yeah, so some uh, at the presentation diarrhea, which may be Campylobacter because we cannot prove it, but yes, at least we can keep in mind. We, you were talking of some vaccine. Which vaccine can cause it? Uh, sir, uh, influenza vaccines. Influenza. Okay. Uh, influenza uh, uh, recently, a uh, review of literature had been published regarding incidence of GBS associated with the COVID uh, vaccination. Okay. Uh, COVID vaccination or COVID itself? Yes, sir. Uh, even uh, COVID infection itself has... Uh, as, a caused, as a pediatrician, I will try that lesson, the blaming to the vaccine. Because otherwise, people will remain away from not only that particular vaccine, other vaccines also. So I will try to speak or convey the message in such a sophisticated way, if at all it is responsible, to show that it is not responsible. The point is you keep all these points in mind. Next one is, I think, yes, okay. Recent uh, injection, snake bite. Aditi, what is the snake bite is important? I don't understand. The sweet neck and the snake bite? Sir, in cases of neurotoxic, uh... Which, which neurotoxin? Snake. Which type of the snake? Uh, cobra, At least from the, from the uh, knowledge uh, point of view. I think uh, cobra and crete and everything, let us try to know from Nikesh and uh, Dr. Anand that which will can cause this type of a problem, right? But okay, any problem of even the dog bite can cause this problem? Then unborn poisoning. Which poisoning? Uh, sir, uh, presence of uh, wild berries uh, ingestion or okay. uh, presence of contaminated ingestion causing botulism in the okay. patient. Right, that can also some toxin you can try to cover. It. Agree. You asked the similar complaint in the past. That means multiple times GBS can develop. Uh, no, sir. So this uh, time GBS is the past of the GPS, multiple times GPS. Number one, what no, I mean sir, to uh, say. What I mean to say, we learn from the experts that whether this recurrent GBS is known, that's the point. I will try to work. Right. Second, you said family history. Whether is it known to run in the family? And if yes, in what way? 
So you will try to gather the information or points that how will give the importance to this information, right? That was the point. I think before we go further, let us go to the experts, please. Uh, Dr. Nitish, can you take this, all the points that how uh, it will help us to confirm or to explore some of the nearby differentials and the condition itself? Yeah. So now I think uh, he tried quite a few negative history to exclude things. So if I recall and start one by one, seizures. So of course, a seizure, you want to know upper motor neuron lesion, but something called as... Uh, like Hello. Yes, Neil. I think she's trying to call somebody else, not to us. Okay. Um, so uh, something like uh, when uh, immune conditions, uh, MOG antibodies or neuromatis oblica, where you have transnosculitis, but you also have a uh, cortical lesions. So cortical lesions may just give seizure, but you at the same time have a spinal lesion as well. So th that can help you. So that's good history, but you should know the why, the, why you are uh, asking or thinking that way. Uh, Sir so was uh, discussing about... Uh, Poisons, you discuss about the poison, that's that's very important. Uh, different uh, different enteroviruses can cause infection and weakness. Says so yes, of course, it's important. Uh, sometimes uh, even vitamin deficiency, not for this child, but B12 uh, deficiencies and that causes a weakness, uh, uh, pain, and especially B12 uh, deficiencies. Now talking about uh, family history or uh, talking about the history of similar history in past. So past history of similar complaints. So again, those kind of uh, transosmolarities or specific immune myelitis, uh, they they uh, go and come back. So they may have regression and come back or relapse as well. So that's definitely important to know. GBS, yes, it can come back. Uh, not that common, but it is possible. So definitely, uh, these are two, three reasons why we asked similar history in the past. Uh, even uh, this child, uh, totally out of the box, child is very uh, cachexic. I mean, or I don't know, I've not examined, but as you said, very undernourished. So yes, uh, TB should be thought for. So anything to uh, include or exclude tuberculosis can be helpful. Mm, uh, then family history. So usually family history will be something to do with the diet. Uh, so definitely with the diet, uh, B12 uh, deficiencies, tuberculosis, all those things are possible. Uh, your thought about diphtheria. Dr. Nitish, in any way, GPS in the family, whether is it known? Uh, no, sir, it's highly, highly rare. So yeah. it's not like a tuberculosis or something. And, uh, and at the same time, it is not inheritance, I think. It's no, not absolutely, yeah. sir. Uh, also, very important part uh, that's some differential with the pain and weakness. Uh, I ask you, Abhishek, uh, up front, we check urine for something, and uh, when you keep the uh, urine uh, on its own, it turns black. Do you think for some condition? Uh, so condition named as alkaptonuria due to homogenetic acid oxidase deficiency uh, would lead to uh, uh, such uh, symptoms uh, causing blackening of urine due to oxidation of uh, uh, of the uh, metabolites in the urine and there would be presence of uh, backache uh, uh, in the patient. So four five due years. Four five, yes sir. Four, four, five. Four, four, five years. is something where you can have back pain. Uh, so urine is just part of the investigation but uh, you get the back pain, weakness uh, can be episodic as well. So something to just think on as one of the DD as well. Sir, Dr. Anand, anything from your side? Yeah, here, uh, I don't know, which is biased with a single diagnosis. When you're approaching a child with a long weakness, it should be a little bit broad. And uh, some of the issues you already mentioned. So, suppose you already mentioned the three more important diagnoses GBS, transverse myelitis, and uh, some other, other problem we just going to, going to discuss. But, what is about your uh, paralysis, whether it is progressing or not? You mentioned about this weakness of both the lower limb. Now it is eight days, whether it is progressing in severity and also upper limb. What about the, the what about his upper limb status? You know, I think I not heard whether he mentioned anything about the upper limb. Then again, when it is totally progressing, what about his respiratory status? Whether any difficulty in breathing? That is also another thing we have to consider. 
because you know, any, any difficulty in breathing because it is one of the complication of GBS also. And then one by one, you have to present the higher functions, cranial nerves, motor system and nervous system. So you only mentioned any, any history of uh, uh, any history of uh, weakness, we only mentioned no history of conversion, no altered cell. Okay. What about the cranial nerves? Yeah, some of these condition will get a weak. What are the conditions will get a, uh, some of the cranials you have mentioned here? Because you at least you have to mention that uh, there is the involvement of this. Some you have to, just now you mentioned about 9th and 10th. What about other cranials? What about his vision? You know, what is important of vision here? Then what is important of vision? Uh, involvement of uh, optic nerve would signify along with yeah. so uh, weakness. So there is a suggestion of any involvement of second brain nerves. There is no history of uh, any diplopia, anything like that. Okay, fifty. We are not concerned much. Then we have to something we have to mention about the milia fissure with the brain. We know, and that is I told you, it is not be biased with it. here history and with everything is very really clear because it is a. Uh, Weakness of the lower limb, pain is there, bladder, it is a, as Prajavadi Sama, it is just a mathematical character. But for discussion purpose, when you are pressing a case of, we are pressing a case of lower limb weakness. And you have to see what are the, DD will come out of it. Respiratory insufficiency is very, very important. One or two, three crying nerves uh, mentioning is very, very important. Then, somebody mentioned about diphtheria. As I asked, uh, Mehta is he a student? Mehta ah. staff faculty? Mehta is already yes, he has passed the MD, but okay. very good, Adi, very uh, good, but very good student. Yeah, Adi, Adi, so what about uh, neurological manifestation of the diphtheria? What are three important neurological manifestations? Aditi, what sir is asking that what are the presentations or manifestations of diphtheria? I think before that I will ask you one question. Are you first year or second year? Second year. Second year. Have you seen any patient of diphtheria? Yes. You have seen the patient of diphtheria. Then I think you can answer. Yes. You know, this is the thing that in the residency, you have seen the patient, you will not forget. So on uh, what sir asked, I will ask in some other way. What are the presentation of the patient which you have seen of diphtheria? How the patient came to you? So patient came with uh, cell neck and uh, full neck was present. Okay, that means swelling of the neck. Okay. Swelling of the neck with the complaint of difficulty breathing. Difficulty breathing. What was the age of the child? Three to five. Okay. Anyway, what actually Sir was asking? That if you have seen the patient of diphtheria, you will be able to recall it. Uh, who will take that? Uh, what will the common presentation of diphtheria? Now respond to Dr. Anand's question. Uh, Sandeep, no, no, San, no, no, Sandeep, 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 can you take it? Sandeep? Yes, sir. Yes. So uh, the patient will be presenting with uh, uh, fever, sir. Very good, Ivan. You know, high grade fever is a big fever. complaint. Difficulty in swallowing. Difficulty in swallowing, absolutely. Yes, uh, swelling of the neck. Swelling of the neck, yes. Sometimes even okay. bloody, bloody nasal discharge. Yes, sir. Right, that may be there. So, so what sir was asking that if you are having these points in the history, that will help you. Sir, you can take it further, Dr. Anand. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there are three neurologic manifestations of diphtheria. One is, as you mentioned, it's a uh, palatal palsy. The diphtheria calendar, neurological calendar, you have to think about. Then after eight weeks, you will get uh, ophthalmoplegia. Then after many weeks, you will get a peripheral neuropathy. That is we concerned with here. But it is acute onset. It, I am not saying it is diphtheria yeah. like that. So yeah. you have to uh, take... And after that... Uh, uh, motor then trainers once we covered then we have to go next is motor system. Yes, so I already mentioned which is lower limb, is it progressing, upper limb, is it there or not, and even this is proximal or this is distant. Yeah. So some points already discussed. I am not going further, and definitely you have to mention about sensory system here. Yeah. So here you have to mention about the sensory system because that is very important. Very important here. What type of sensitive symptoms here? Whether he or sensitive symptom, 
वो कंबड़े आया नोट एक्सिंग इगर एक्सामिनेशन फैलिंग करने से सिस्टम व्हाट सेव बाय द हिस्ट्री व्हाइस व्हाट इस ही सेइंग वी हैव टू आस्क लीडिंग क्वेश्चंस सेंसरी एक्सामिनेशन इट विल कम लेटर बट वी हैव टू आस्क लीडिंग क्वेश्चन रिगार्डिंग कायर फंक्शंस क्राइनेनर्स वाटर सिस्टम नॉट सेंसरी सिस्टम एंड लाइक दैट ओके दैट इज ओके Past yes, history. Sir. What about the past history? What are the things you get to history of a similar weakness in the past? It's just to think about a weakness of the lower limb. So, what are the conditions you get to similar? We are not we are not concerned with the, this particular case. We are we are concerned with the lower limb weakness as a weakness patient. So, you mentioned about there is no history of past history of similarness. History of repeat trauma not possible. History of uh, acute condition not possible. So, what are the past history relevant past? What are the conditions you get to similar weakness in the? I, I think I think Sir has taken the very important point. Forget regarding the our case, but some other case presents repetitively with this type of the weakness is lower limb or at least generalized weakness lower motor neuron type. What you will consider? Suppose two three times, and even once you are required the ventilatory support. That type of the weakness and recurrent in one particular patient. It was not GBS. Demyelinating. Which what do you mean? You know what I what I mean. To just listen to me. It's a recurrent. Patient recovers, again develops. Channelopathy should be con considered. Okay, Mega. Um, what type of channelopathy? Sir, like a hyperkalemic, uh, 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 periodic paralysis, family periodic paralysis. Hyper or hypo. Uh, actually, both type of uh, paralysis are there. Depends upon the symptoms, onset of symptom, whether after food uh, or in fasting. But good thought that you know these type of the periodic paralysis, various regions, most common hyperkalemia. But yes, hyperkalemia is also known. So recurrent. That means what was the question from Dr. Anand? That not necessarily GBS will present with the recurrent. As Dr. Nitish said, that hardly just it is known somebody has reported a different story, but not common. But suppose the if, if you come across that repeatedly this patient had developed this type of problem in the past, then give the thought something else. So Dr. Anand has taken the very good point that don't make your narrow vision. Not only GPS, anything can be there. And suppose these are the stories that recurrent, then think something else. So I think very good point, sir. You can take it further, Anand. Uh, past history of and you will get a periodic paralysis of hereditary past paralysis. You may get it. If I, and then you have to go immunization history. Yeah. So there are what are immunization? You want to mention what the importance of immunization in this history? What are disease you can rule out? For example, polio. So what is the polio? If child had taken polio, then you can rule out completely polio. Even though we are not suspecting here. But the what is features of because uh, there is no polio in India after 2011. Then also we can ask because we are old people. What are the features of polio paralysis? Anybody can Sandeep. Yes, sir. Anybody, please. I again requesting you to open your video. Ar Arthi is silent. Aditi is silent. And one more name, Konika. Please. Come on, so open your radio. So try to try to interact. Yeah. On the contrary, what Anand said, I will take some other way. I am thinking of polio only. Now exclude that. Why not polio? Uh, sir, if it is polio, then there won't be a bilateral symmetry. Okay. Asymmetrical presentation will be there. Uh, if it is polio, then it will be non-progressive. -pro is it? It is non-progressive. I have seen the patient in the morning that the weakness on one upper limb. After even the afternoon hours, I have seen that the both even the all the four limbs paralysis. Evening even the bulbar and next day even death. So rapid progressive polio. But strong point what Dr. Anand said. Number one, just I will to save the time. Try to define the presentation. That how the polio will present, how the GPS will present. Second, very important point which you should focus on the vaccination. Not only oral polio vaccine, whether this patient has got this injectable polio IPV. If the IPV has received least possibility of the polio virus, and that to suppose two doses of intramuscular, any child has received, even in the life. Least possibility of development of polio myelitis. 
OPV may not give this long lasting this immunity. So the point is, you have to go history of immunization, very, very important, not just completed. You should, here I think you should mention that what is the polio vaccination status? How many doses of OPV? How many doses of, is there any injectable? Was it intradermal or even the intramuscular pool? And what numbers of doses at what age? Very easily you can roll out this poliomyelitis with a history of background of the vaccination and clinical picture. So I think Dr. Anand has taken the very good point and somebody is going to ask in the exam. Sir, yeah, please yeah. take it. There are three aspects of immunization. One is a polio like vaccination. BC, uh, BCE are not saying you can uh, exclude uh, to an extent the polio. Second thing is, as already mentioned, some conditions like a rabies vaccine, MMR vaccine, influenza vaccine produce post myelinating weakness. Third thing is that any IM injection. By DPT, previously people used to give a IM back in sciatic and palsy, traumatic in oritis. So any IM injection. I am any vaccination if you are taking IM. But nowadays the practice is not there with the severe, I mean, say, campaign by the pediatrician. Now we are getting antral at the But any IM injection will produce uh, here. It is a low limb weakness. Uh, so you have to think about sciatica and uh, traumatic. This is the importance of a uh, history of uh, uh, this one. Dietist is nothing there. What about BCG? What do you consider? You mentioned BCG and you look for the BCG scar? I think that he yes, mentioned. Sir. He mentioned that yes. scar is present. That is possible. BCG yes. I think uh, then social media church say nothing to do with it. I think so. Um, only my advice is that uh, don't go you, uh, anyway. You are proceeding after getting a, a, a definite diagnosis. I agree, but should not go by like that. Uh, it should be a, a history. You could discuss in the form of a low limb weakness, both low limb weakness. So what are the possibility? And uh, as you mentioned, uh, first we are seeing Guillain-Barre syndrome in trauma uh, transition to an extent. Uh, and some other rare, rare possibility it is there in the queue. But you have to give a broad group, then you have to then come down to a narrow diagnosis. Uh, the support is of positive and negative findings. Absolutely. Uh, yes, I think what even uh, Dr. Anand was mentioning, uh, you can try to mention the negative points some of the complications of GPS of Olympia thinking. Is there any problem of the respiratory, even the ophthalmoplegia or other involved cranial now? Uh, because nearby even the myasthenia gravis like any picture. So these are the points which you can mention purposefully in the negative history. Anyway, I think we have taken more than one hour in the history and it is absolutely justified. Yeah, and we'll, it, we'll move yeah. faster. Yeah, because there are, if a history part is very clear, then probably it will be very easy even to focus for the examination. I think before we go for the examination, I want two persons who can give the summary from the history. And again, if I remind you, don't go for repetition of the same points suddenly which you are described in the history. This is not the summary. Summary should be the very short that what is your hypothesis, what problem you are thinking. And try to put in a such a way that is it neurological case? Then where the anatomy? Is it central or periphery? Periphery also what type of the picture and what type of pathology is possible? And if at all, if you are considering some etiology, most common first and less common like that, you can put it. So this is the inference of our discussion should be there. Who will take it? First, Aditi. Aditi, I think you can try. You know the case. As per history, uh, so the case is uh, more of a six year opinion. So the case belongs to neurology involvement, suggest of neurological involvement. Uh, so cortex is not involved. I have to doubt that. And uh, nutrition uh, part. As per history, sir, it could be one possibility could be uh, tuberculosis. Tuberculosis where? Because you uh, said that this uh, spine. Some... Okay, spine. Suppose spine tuberculosis. What type of the pathology? Is it what spine? Is it some tuberculoma, spinal tuberculoma even, or it is the end arthritis? Because you know, uh, this is the vertebral artery and arthritis can also develop. 
So whatever the pathology we present in the form of the lower motor neuron type of lesion. Suppose if the tuberculosis of the spine, right, what we say, spinal tuberculosis meningitis. Then what will be the presentation, lower motor neuron type or upper motor neuron type? What will be the presentation? Aditi, any idea? Suppose you may take it paraplegia. Let us take it this way. But paraplegia in what way? Upper motor, motor neuron type of lesion or lower motor neuron type of lesion? What would be the presentation? If the etiology is tuberculosis. Mita, what would be your thoughts? Sir, at the level of lesion, it will be lower motor neuron, and below that, it will present as upper motor neuron. Lesion. Yeah. So, more of spasticity and upper motor neuron. Present yeah, presentations or complaints, which is attention drawing, is more of this. As I said, already what Meda said, that will be the upper motor neuron type of lesion. Okay. But here, keeping my lower motor, what will be your further thoughts? Anybody else would uh, like to make the attempt? Arti or Kolika, one more, Dr. Sunita, anybody? I want that voluntary participation should be there. Let's make the attempt. What is my idea? That if we take some time, no problem. But you should speak. And if you speak, probably you can learn. Arti, would you like to? Put your thoughts, summary. Okay, Abhishek, how you will put it? Summary uh, of the yes. history, which we discuss. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, considering a uh, possibility of uh, uh, neuropathy pain that the patient is uh, suffering and uh, presence of uh, progressive uh, descending involvement, possibility of upper motor neuron lesion is more likely over lower motor neuron uh, lesion. There is uh, no any evidence of uh, uh, floppiness uh, in the patient, which uh, would lead uh, to suggest possibility of lower motor neuron lesion in the patient. So here what you are considering, lower motor or upper motor? Uh, sir, the likelihood of upper motor neuron lesion uh, more than lower motor neuron. Is it? Right. You have some explanation? Or calling yes, it the upper motor neuron type of lesion? Yes, sir. Uh, the patient had a complaint of uh, pain. Uh, or, 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 or I will say, put in such a way, right, that at least the weakness or the neurological problem, the lower limbs. Upper motor, the lower motor problem, you can decide after the examination. No problem. But try to put in the history in a way, whatever the information you have gathered, and you analyze. At least here you can say this way that six years old child, female, has presented with the history of seven days, that means the acute illness, which started very specifically in the form of the backache. Already we have discussed that the backache, we decided that it's a cause is neurological. And if neurological, it should be the root pain or the radiculopathy. Right. With that, even some involvement of the bladder, make it summary now. What we have discussed is all right. And with that, the grace which has started from the lower limbs, which is even the bilateral, which is progressive, and I hope that it should be of this lower motor neuron type of lesion. If I put all the points together, it indicates that the, it's a acute, progressive, lower motor neuron type of this uh, weakness in the lower limbs. Then if you put it, in the absence of fewer, probably infection is less likely. And even the polio, I may keep it the possibility, but very remote, it is looking at the epidemiological situation of the country. And even you can add for vaccination status. And then you can put it in such a way that following some infection, it is likely the post-infective inflammatory condition. Right. 
which may be in the form of the immunological reaction. What it is and everything probably can decide later on, which are findings, examination, and confirmation from the necessary investigations. Right. No, so to, yes, Dr. Anand, before yes. we go, examination. You have to yes. take two pronged approach. One is yeah. the what are the etiological factors, and but second thing is what is the localization of the lesion. Yeah, anatomy. Etiological may be anatomical. So etiological may be infective, very unlikely, and uh, you got a malignancy, then demyelination, then vascular, then genetic, and some other condition. What about uh, our localization? It is a cortical, pyramidal tract, and also Indian capsule, and I am not going that much detail. Then you go to spinal cord, you go to anterior fossils, then you go to nerve, then you go to myonal junction, and you go to your muscle. So yeah. after this, what it will come? So you have to anatomical localization important. Then you have to give what a uh, function and localization has a bit important. So how can you reach it? Because there's nothing to suggest in a promoter neural lesion by history. There's no heart function or in disorientation. There's no speech problem. There's no subconscious. There's no history of conversion. So there is nothing to suggest your upper motor neuron is involved. But meanwhile, you got so many points to suggest that there is some local peripheral lesion there in your issue is there. So you have presented the well, but how you reach a diagnosis to your upper motor? So Abhishek, yeah. uh, you're doing a fantastic job, but don't get biased with your final diagnosis. Present with your history. What is the presentation? What are the common things with this history, this presentation, what Anand is trying to say, you have a corticospinal tract. And you know the means first, first, I mean, first order neuron, second order neuron. And as I was trying to say, cortical, you don't have altered sensorium, seizures, the other deficits, um, like, uh, nothing of those things. You don't have anything to suggest from the uh, brainstem area because uh, you don't have any brainstem or cranial nerves or those kind of things involved. So it's likely whether it's a spinal or lower down. I think you are coming towards spinal. Spinal can be anything, but overall presentation is of the element. It can turn out to be anything. That's fine. But common things are common and you have to see the current history. Right? Mm, sir. Okay. Um, yes, Meda. Sir, uh, there is one uh, history, um, sir, uh, he has said that bladder, uh, there is a free, uh, increased frequency of urination uh, and uh, there is no history of uh, uh, this uh, dribbling of urine or uh, overflow in, con uh, in incontinence and increased frequency of bladder uh, can be because of hypertonicity, hypertonic bladder that can point toward upper motor neuron And where thing. would you find that uh, localization in the upper motor? And still, even you know, these are the points from our history or yes. examination that will be the more clarity. And the point is, even still, with this memory oh. involvement, also always keep the common possibilities first. You know, common possibilities will always remain the first, right? Because very, very rightly, Dr. Nathan said that when this type of the problem is there, acute placid paralysis is the most common, I will say, condition with the various reasons. Of course, on examination, if you go, you may get some DTR increase or something, and then you may change your mind. But I think still we are not examining the patient, but from the history, it should be presented like this. So now, uh, Abhishek, you can go for examination. I think more clarity will be there. Yes, sir. Uh, clinical examination and admission. So patient was examined under well-lighted and well-ventilated area and in all the position as in when required at the uh, examination okay, court. Okay. However, the patient was... Yes. Okay, uh, now your slide, most... slide has come. Please. Yes, sir. Uh, the patient was conscious and irritable and was undernourished. Uh, the patient uh, was uh, vitally stable and had a euthermia. The patient's pulse rate was 90 per minute as measured by palpatory method and respiratory rate was 24 per minute with thoracoabdominal type of respiration. 
uh, the patient's uh, blood pressure was uh, between 75th to 90th centimeter without any antihypertensive medication and had a uh, uh, Wong Baker uh, faces pain rating scale of 6 uh, by 12. There was no any evidence of icterus, failure, cyanosis, or uh, sir, patient's uh, uh, BMI was 12.4 kg per meter square and had height by age of 98% and had occipital of frontal circumference of 51 cm, which was uh, within normal range as per the age and gender of the patient. Uh, sir, as my patient had uh, prominent complaints pertaining to central nervous system, I would like to examine the uh, uh, CNS uh, as uh, my priority. Sir, in, uh, the patient was conscious and was well oriented to time, place, and person. The patient was well uh, attentive and had concentrated uh, with the examiner and had average intelligence with the fluent and coherent speech. The patient had normal sleep wake cycle with no any alteration. Uh, Abhishek, uh, I sir, to, uh, Abhishek, I want to interfere here itself. Because you you, you missed some important findings here, sir. We cannot go to nervous system now. Because uh, I'll say, first you have to mention the posture and attitude of the patient, how you are seeing the patient. Here are the patient with the both low and weakness, but which posture he is occupying. And also sometimes the missing camera decerebrate, decorticate, opisotonus, or here it may flash the posture, whatever it is there, by any evidence of hypotonia, both of And what is important of BP here? Blood pressure. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, presence of uh, autonomic instability in form of hypotension or hypertension. Yeah. What about respiratory system? You are not mentioned whether it is irregular, irregular, not mentioned. Because your respiratory uh, rate also everything is important here. And why I interfered? Because after the BP and everything mentioned, you have mentioned general extension, you are not mentioned. What about head size? What about any neurocutaneous markers? What about any other angiomatous lesion? Oh, you have to put head to foot exercise, you talk to me, that is why you interfere. Otherwise, I won't interfere. Because before neural examination, after general assessment, you have to head to foot extension. It's everything may be written. So you have to, and also even local examination, we are not mentioned about it. anything you have to mention. So head to foot exercise, you have to mention. You are not doing it, you know, you are not practice to do like that. Because it was parallel, sinus, rubbing, edema, lymph, I agree. Then before going to the nervous extension, you have to head to the extension, head size, shape, and any dysmorphology. It may not be there. And also any other neuro neurocognitive is very important because uh, this is also activity may some uh, neurofibre or something like that. So you have to head to the extension, very important. You totally miss that part. Uh, for example, sir, what is it? Absolutely, absolutely. I was waiting, but uh, what you have taken the very important point. Uh, we he already started nervous system. That is why I interfered. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> And also, it is nervous system, not central nervous system. It is always nervous system. We are examining yeah. peripheral nervous system, autonomic nervous system, everything we are examining. So you better to say it is examination of nervous system. Nervous, nervous system, system, yes. Okay, sir. Yes. Okay. Okay, good. You got any findings in uh, general examination? Uh, sir, there was no any abnormality on a uh, general examination of the patient, sir. So what does uh, examiner ask you? Otherwise, you can skip that point. Okay. Okay. I think one more point, we say. Actually, I was waiting that uh, after this examination, we'll take the point, but what Dr. Anand said that we may forget it, the general examination points. You know, you have not put the growth chart. Growth chart should BMI growth chart you kept in the history part, I think again to history part, the group that BMI chart will not come. But here also we have to put the growth chart regarding the height, weight, that will give the idea regarding the, what is the nutritional status of the child and then BMI. Anyway, keep in mind the exam, please don't miss it. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, the patient was uh, conscious and was well oriented to time, place and person. And the patient was well attentive and had concentrated with the examiner well and had average intelligence uh, with fluent and coherent speech and had the normal uh, sleep wake cycle with no any deviation. Uh, so I had examined the cranial nerves uh, of the patient, which had to be normal. Uh, the patient had uh, intact uh, 
differentiation of uh, smell a patient uh, had uh, uh, identified uh, uh, the smell uh, well and had no any difficulty in vision and a fundus examination was done of the patient which had came out to be normal the patient had uh, a present of both uh, direct and indirect and had a uh, uh, and had an uh, accommodation reflex present. So the patient had a uh, normal central position of the eyeball and had uh, eye movement uh, was present in all the directions with uh, no any evidence of process. The pupils uh, were mid dilated and were reactive to light. Uh, so the patient had uh, intact uh, sensation over the face and had a uh, uh, normal conjunctival and corneal reflexes uh, present. Said in seventh period uh, now examination, the patient was uh, able to differentiate over the inner two thirds of the tongue and had uh, normal facial expressions and uh, had uh, responded uh, positively to Rini's test and had localized uh, uh, Weber's test to the center of the forehead. Uh, the patient had uh, intact uh, sensations over uh, posterior one third of the tongue and had a central position of uvula with uh, uh, present uh, gag reflex. The patient had a normal tone and power of both trapezius and sternocleidal mustard muscle and had a, a normal tone and power of uh, uh, the muscles of the tongue. So in a, a motor system, the patient had a normal uh, bulk of the muscles and had a normal tone in the, the muscles of upper limb. However, the patient had a, a hypertonia in form of spasticity over the uh, bilateral uh, lower limb. Uh, the patient had uh, uh, plus five uh, power in uh, upper limb. However, uh, the patient had uh, uh, slightly reduced uh, power over the uh, proximal muscles of the lower limb and uh, the power was greatly reduced in the distal muscles over the ankle and the knee. Uh, the patient had uh, uh, had uh, uh, present uh, abdominal uh, reflexes and had uh, extensor uh, plantar reflex, that is Babinski sign was present. Over upper limb, patient had uh, absent uh, deep tendon reflexes over uh, the biceps and triceps and had uh, uh, asymmetrical involvement. The patient had uh, hypertonicity uh, over uh, deep tendon reflexes over left side and had a uh, positive ankle pronux. However, the patient had uh, normal reflexes on the uh, right side. Uh, sir, uh, the patient had a normal uh, sensory system examination with uh, no any uh, deviation and had a normal uh, cerebellar sign. There was no any evidence of uh, nystagmus or any tremors or any other abnormal movements in the patient. Uh, rest, uh, sir, uh, patient had a toe walking present and had a, a, Brudinsky, a neck component of Brudinsky's uh, positive along with the patient had neck stiffness. Patient had a normal uh, bowel and bladder sensation and uh, there was a reduced uh, trunkal tonicity with the presence of paraspinal muscle spasm. The patient had a normal systemic examination apart from nervous system with no any deviation. Okay. Can you stop sharing? Dr. Nitish, can you take this uh, serious examination, what is described for the further analysis? No, absolutely. And I think you'll need some reminder as well. But let, let's start with the higher functions. Yeah. So higher functions are appropriate, very much needed. Uh, cranial nerves, you said, uh, you did uh, examination. We'll not go into the details of those. They are normal. Um, upper limb, uh, upper limb uh, what I understand, your examination is absolutely normal. Your tone, power, reflexes, sensation, everything is normal. Right, Abhishek? No, sir. No, no. No, uh, no I think uh, he has mentioned some abnormal findings, upper limbs also. So, uh, Abhishek, Abhishek, just can you remind without uh, sharing the your presentation? Yes, sir. Important positive findings of the upper limb. Yeah. Suppose if I ask you the direct. Uh, the patient. Abhishek, for the clarity, I will ask you the direct. Whether the muscle tone was normal or abnormal? Yes, sir. Upper limb. No, sir. The muscle tone was. Yes, sir. The muscle tone of upper limb was entirely normal. With normal. Man okay. Had a plus five power. One by one. What was the power? Uh, so the power was plus five in uh, both uh, upper limbs, sir. Okay. What was this uh, dip tender reflexes? 
the patient had a reflexia in both upper limbs yeah both upper limbs he mentioned the a reflexia okay I, so i think this is the finding that the tone was normal yeah. power was normal but the deep tendon reflex is a reflexia yeah, reflex. this is the finding of upper limb now you can take it from the upper limb sure. then further nitish please so uh, uh abhishek uh, what is the reflex arc when you do the deep tendon reflex what is what happens just as a physiology Uh, there is sir, uh, alpha motor neuron stimulation. Yes. Uh, yes, sir, there is sir, alpha motor neuron stimulation uh, during elicitation of uh, uh, reflex arc. Uh, sir, uh, that causes uh, uh, the sensations are uh, related at the spinal cord level. And uh, from uh, uh, there, uh, there is a stimulation of uh, 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 neurons causing uh, uh, flexion of the muscle involved. So uh, I will now shift to Mehta. Uh, Mehta means uh, tone is normal as per his uh, examination. Power is normal. So your uh, your spinal cord, your anterior horn cell, and your uh, means afferent nerve, and M junction, and muscle are normal. That's what we understand, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Tone power normal. I presume sensation are normal as well. I presume. So what he's trying to say is tone and power are normal. And reflexes are absent. So where the lesion can be? Um, sir, uh, either the lesion has, uh, since reflex arc uh, is a spinal phenomena, it can be facilitated by upper motor neuron. But uh, um, basically, uh, either it has to be a sensory part or the motor component has to be involved in the same. Sure. So... And we presume motor. It is it is a more affected. likely a lower motor neuron type of lesion in upper sure. limbs. Then, but yes. also we are not talking about the uh, means your motor nerve should not be affected because what he says tone and power are normal. Tone and power are normal. So yes, your sir. problem is either at the sensory nerve or yes, at sir. the actual spinal means uh, spinal cord level. Spinal cord level. Yes, sir. Right. So that's what he is talking about uh, in the form of element because it's yes, a reflexia. Sir. You may have a reflexia even in UMN, but in the acute shock stage, right? And yeah, this yeah, is not sir. acute in shock. Spinal in shock. Yeah, spinal sir. shock. But this is more than five, seven days history. Yes, sir. So, uh, Abhishek, uh, uh, so sensation were normal upper limb. Yes, sir. The sensations were normal in the upper limb. Right. So, uh, are you happy to localize the problem with normal tone and power? Your motor mm -hmm. nerves are normal. Mm -hmm. Dr. Nitin, just, just can I suggest, can you take the lower limb findings also and then yes, put sir, together please. the story? Sure. Uh, in Maybe lower that. limbs, Abhishek, just to remind everybody, all of us, uh, what were the findings? Suppose if you start from the muscle tone, what normal or abnormal? So there was presence of spasticity. Uh, lower, of lower, limb, lower limbs, he said spasticity. Both sides. Yes, yes sir. There was presence of spasticity. Okay. Both lower limbs. Then what was the power? Uh, sir, uh, in proximal limb, the power was uh, plus 4 by 5. However, yeah. in it was plus 3 plus by three. 5. That means more affected uh, periphery, but affected both proximal and distal. Okay, then what are the deep tendon reflexes over here? Uh, sir, deep tendon reflexes. So there was hyperreflexia in uh, uh, left lower, lower limb. limb. Yes, sir, with the uh, normal reflexes in uh, right lower limb. Right lower limb. When plantar? Uh, plantar was, Babinski sign was present over uh, both lower limbs. Both lower limbs. And clonus one side, not clonus on the opposite side. I think one side, that was the finding. Yes, sir. Now, now I think, uh, and sensory system, you said the sensation is normal. Yes, sir. Bladder examination, as you say, not palpable, no any other, at least on examination, you didn't get anything. No, sir. Okay, on the spine, when you examine the spine was normal? Yes, examination, sir. Yes. Examination, back? Yes, sir. The back examination was entirely normal. Do you normal. Any hair or any depression? Nothing you got in? No, sir. No, sir. There was no any evidence of uh, any neural tube uh, defect in the patient. Okay. Uh, so, three important aspects of uh, examination here. Sorry, sir. Yeah. One is uh, cranial examination completely better, except the fifth cranial. You not mentioned about the, the motor part. You mentioned wonderfully about sensory part. 
but motor part you are not mentioned. So we examiners very fond of finding your fault because uh, you are not mentioned the motor part. Then power, how will you get power? Which classification? Uh, Grade one, two, three, five. So what is the class name of the classification? Powering grade. Yeah, somebody put it in the uh, chat box. Yeah. So you mentioned what are the muscle will not grade a power? We will not some muscle will not grade. What are the muscles? Which not we which will not grade. Grade one, two, three. Here you wonderfully mentioned about the some muscles, grade five, grade four. So small hand muscles will not power, will not measure the powering. Trunk muscle will give a grade power. You mentioned about the flexes of the hand and hand flexion, you mentioned about some grading, grade five. How can you say the grade one, grade two, grade three, grade four, grade five? So you mentioned here you mentioned about the power of the flexor muscles of the hand. I don't know, it is not needed also. Then the, when you are mentioning the power of the muscle, you have to not go by joint. Shoulder joint, elbow joint, knee joint, hip group joint. Of the muscle. Group of the muscles. You not mentioned, you have to go by uh, muscles, or you can just you can mention shoulder abduction, adduction like that. Or you can say, we specifically, old people say biceps, triceps, or back or radialis, or triceps, or back or triceps. Maybe we are very old people, but at least it should not make it not joint. We are presenting a neurologic case, not an orthopedic case. So this is a mistake. And also, here you have to mention just like sensory system normal. Because even not uh, strikers. So here we are waiting for some sensory findings. I think this part also agree with me. So we are looking for some sensory. So you have to say detail. You mentioned about the motor system detail, cranial detail. Such a detailed examination we have to mention. What about the cortical sensation? What is the posterior root? Posterior cone sensation? So we have to mention here sensory system because we are waiting, waiting, waiting for it. Because here you are mentioning some disparity because upper limb findings we cannot correlate with the lower limb findings. You are uh, power and not matching with the deep tendon plus. So uh, we are we are looking for your sensory level. Yes, this are rightly mentioned at the level of decision, you may make it element. But what about lower tone? It's only one week. How will you get it? Uh, means it will take a spinal shock. Maybe over, okay, one may, may get a deep tendon reflux, maybe brisk, but there is some disparity. So upper limb reflux, it is absent. Yes, sir, the patient had a reflex, yeah. Okay, and also lower limb itself, you are getting some, uh, uh, not uh, some disparity. You say, but I tell if there is some differences there. It may happen, it may happen, okay. So all these things you have to give. So, uh, uh, sir, we used to grade the small muscles of the hand. Uh, sorry, 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 I did not follow. But your points are absolutely valid. Um, it's uh, when uh, you have to be very clear with the sensory system when you know there is some some uh, different exemption findings are coming up. Um, and that's why I asked twice. I presume uh, sensory uh, things are normal. Um, and uh, so detail examination as Anand said, it's very essential. Uh, now, if if you summarize uh, lower limb findings, what you said, it you had a hyper, I mean, no, spasticity. So it's spasticity, hypertonia, and what's kind of spasticity? Something called as late knife, uh, class knife, etc. What do you think? What kind of spasticity is there? Uh, so the patient had class knife, velocity dependent spasticity was present in uh, both lower limbs. Okay, at the knee, uh, ankle, everywhere. So yes, uh, uh, predominantly at the level of knee. Okay, and that's okay. Um, and how and you say the reflexes were hype, I mean, it's exaggerated, right? More, uh, yes, right sir. Side. The patient had exaggerated over a left side compared to right side, right? So, but right side were also exaggerated. No, sir. The patient had normal reflexes over the right side, right side. Okay, so plantar, sec plantar extensor, plantar sex extensor. Okay, yes, sir. Uh, and, uh, what is dissociate anesthesia? Because uh, there is some limitation for the online class. We have to ask different types of anesthesia, sensory environment. What is saddle anesthesia? What is dissonance anesthesia? What is the brown sugar syndrome? So some questions on direct physical examination, you make it such questions. So yeah, yeah anyway, there's no involvement of the sensory system here. 
but it can give some uh, findings in what is dissociative anesthesia, what is the finding will get a syringomedia, something like that. What is dissociative anesthesia? Uh, sir, dissociative anesthesia is sir, uh, distorted uh, perception of uh, different uh, uh, different uh, sensations present, sir. Uh, it, it is caused by, sir, uh, um, inhibition of uh, nerve impulses at uh, between uh, between the higher centers and the uh, and the uh, uh, lower centers, such a uh, which are uh, uh, which are uh, found uh, within the uh, intrinsic uh, within the uh, higher centers, sir. Okay, before going detail, what is Brown sequel syndrome? Because I think your answer is not absolutely right. It is an confusion. So, what is the real first thing about uh, Brown sequel syndrome? For example, hemisection, what will happen to sensation? So, Brown sequel uh, syndrome is hemisection of the spinal cord, mm -hmm. causing uh, ipsilateral loss of joint position and uh, vibration sense due to mm -hmm. posterior column involvement. And there is contralateral loss of pain and temperature okay. sensation. Now, we can again say what about this sensation? Yes, sir. Uh, this, uh, yes, sir. Um, said uh, seen in cases like syringomyelia or intramedullary tumors, when there is involvement of the later spinothalamic tract and there is loss of pain, temperature, and uh, uh, but the touch is uh, intact because of uh, preservation of the posterior column medial and meniscus. Yeah, there's nothing to do with the upper motor node and the nothing to do with yeah. the yeah. And uh, here, one point you mentioned about one only one point there are positive finding you mentioned about next phenomenon. The only one point you mentioned, whether it is next sickness itself, whether it is a tenderness in that area. So, what are the conditions you will get? It is not a case of meningitis. What are the conditions you will get a false positive next sickness? Because next sickness is always supported by other signs of meningitis, Kernick signs and Bruce's signs. Here, you get only next sickness is positive. What are the conditions you will get a positive next sickness, false positive next sickness? It is, not case case of, of it is not a case of meningitis. A case of tetanus would also present with uh, next uh, neck stiffness, uh, presence of uh, uh, spondylolysis or a disc prolapse would also present with uh, neck stiffness or any uh, uh, case of uh, uh, muscle spasm. Um, okay, you have to broadly classify the intracranial and intracranial. Intracranial three lesion. One is Cauchy for the toma. One is subarachnoid hemorrhage, third one is mini intracranial Outside cranial, muscle, petrophagia space, tonsil, lymph node, skull, spine, everything will include. So it is a very broad category. So out of this, why you are getting next here? Uh, so possibly the possibility of intracranial uh, lesion was uh, more likely uh, over extracranial as uh, sir, there was no any uh, uh, complaint of fever or sore throat. So that would exclude the possibility of uh, either Quincy or uh, or uh, retropharyngeal space infection that might lead to uh, next stiffness in the patient. So Abhishek, I think you should always think very straight for what Dr. Anand has given the guidance. First, confirm your findings. Is it really the next stiffness? And suppose if you say yes, then give the thought. Is it really the case of meningitis? Suppose not the meningitis, that means not the inflammation of the or a serious infection. Then try to think that some local cause can also contribute for the next stiffness. Local causes already have been discussed, right? Out of these, whether you have any point to offer the explanation in the present case, that's the way that how you can think. Of course, you say the retropathy and other things patient will be quite fever and toxic and sick and all the findings are not there. So there is no question. But then what can be the other reasons? You know, once you, number one, for the exam point of view, I think this, this is a good case for an uh, exam point of view. Absolutely. Reason uh, so is, you know, that first confirm your findings. Putting the findings of the paper, suppose this gross discrepancy, then we have to give the thought that really my findings are right or there is a discrepancy in my examination. Once, suppose if you have confirmed that, yes, even after the thorough examination, the discrepancy is there, then try to find out the possible solution. Then what can be the explanations? 
then in that discrepancies to be accepted otherwise you know it becomes uh, difficult for you to explain so abhishek if i say you are doing very good uh, knowing the complexity of case yeah. so first and foremost congratulations for that now let's let's try to what sir has said so you, you have next stiffness present what's what about the what is kernig sign what is brodsky sign uh, brodsky sign uh, is the flexion of uh, hip muscle uh, which is caused when there is a flexion simultaneous flexion of uh, the uh, neck and uh, kernig sign is the uh, uh, is the uh, appearance of stretching and pain sensation in the neck whenever there is a extension of the uh, knee done when there is a uh, hip flexion is done at 90 degree okay so was there was there sign positive in this child the panic sign was negative in the patient however brodinski sign neck component was positive there was okay. a, a presence of pain uh, and uh, spasticity uh, uh, over the neck region okay when we had attempted to stretch the neck the slr test like raising i'm sure it's not means you might not have done that but so when you have this kind of discrepancy you can so we know the neck stiffness can be because meningitis extract near local lesions but also you think these are the meninges and your nerve roots going out of that region from every region so if you have some lesion which causes your meninges to be adherent they don't allow nerve roots to be flexed or pulled uh, with the movement or cord is stuck somewhere and that can also give you a kind of pseudo neck stiffness or this one of the other uh, the brodinski brodinski or even the srt is positive so if you can put those things now again you can you know the diagnosis now put all the things all the signs together and you can try to explain your findings your uh, i know the case so i know the details and i know your examination is right but if you are just sitting in the exam blindly it feels either you are not done examination correctly or there is a discrepancy so everyone is thinking in a right way you are also right so now you prove yourself that you are right so with here the... are three important controversy findings is uh, as we are sitting away from your patient one is about uh, your upper limb reflex second is neck stiffness whether it is neck tenderness or neck stiffness the third thing is a definite sensory level we cannot demonstrate all these things have happened all these things have happened you may get a false neck sign you may get a upper limb uh, uh, deep tender absent is absent and also sensory level sometimes a very small child uh, age of child is 6 years 6 years 6 years yeah then also she can mention something because recently we had another case for like this one and uh, she mentioned about the sensory level at least uh, pain and uh, everything you can measure even though that uh, temperature and everything at least sensory level we can measure these are the three gray gray not gray idea yeah, means uh, 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 we are getting a 1% to 5% confusion regarding this one. I am not saying your findings are uh, not uh, right, but uh, it is creating some uh, confusion, not confusion, so we have to rethink about it. Uh, you have to recheck it, that is why. Yeah. yeah. I think now we have that some 10, 15 minutes, have we said, so you can go for the summary of your case and whatever the supposed investigations you have performed. But the very important point uh, for all the students, not for only Abhise, that uh, very uh, you always your examination findings should be very perfect. After that, put the findings on the paper and try to find out to verify whether these really your findings are there absolutely in order. Then support the discrepancy. Try to find out the explanation for the discrepancy. It is very, very important. Otherwise, what happens is that you will be confused and then you do not come out from the discussion. Anyway, now you can go further with your presentation. Uh, sir, I had summarized the case as a genial goal as a six-year-old female child born in Hindu community out of non-consignous marriage residing at Naroda, Ahmedabad had presented with acute complaint of backache since seven days, increased frequency of micturition since five days, and pain, weakness, and inability to walk since two days, had bilateral lower limb hypertonia with exaggerated deep tendon reflexes in left limb and absent reflexes in upper limb, 
with intact cerebral and cerebellar sense with no focal neurological deficit or signs of raised intracranial pressure with stable uh, vitals with severe undernutrition. Okay. Have you gone for the investigations? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, yeah, you, sir. You, you can share your investigations if you have prepared the slides. So yes, from sir. history, you are getting some lesion uh, uh, concerned with the uh, upper limb is also power zero. So it may be some lesion confined to that area. You are getting lower limb reflux, everything brisk because of that one. So some lesion confined to C5, 6 range, uh, or even above that one, that may be a possibility. Okay, this is my <laughs> calculator, I don't know. I yeah. Okay, Abhishek, uh, you can present your investigations. Yes, sir. Uh, the patient was investigated in form of CBC in which uh, hemoglobin was 11.7, total leukocyte count 8,200 with differential of 68 by 28, and had a normal uh, RFT and LFT. Uh, sir, patient's lipid profile was normal and serum bit vitamin B12 was within normal limits. The patient's cardiac marker and TFT were normal and uh, uh, nerve conduction velocity uh, was done in this patient in which there was reduced median nerve conduction velocity of bilateral median and alar nerve, suggestive of demyelinating type of polyneuropathy in both upper limbs. Uh, however, the nerve conduction velocity in uh, lower limbs uh, was normal. And sir, patient's chest x-ray was normal and uh, USG uh, abdomen was normal. Okay, anything further? Uh, uh, sir, uh, uh, the patient, uh, considering uh, the patient had... Sir, uh, you, you have any presentation? Any, any further slide is there? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you, sir you can, first, you can take it. Okay, continue. Uh, sir, uh, 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 the patient had asymmetrical or uh, patchy involvement uh, uh, was uh, present. So we went for uh, MRI spine, brain plus spine screening of this patient. Uh, sir, uh, in that, which, uh, that, that your slide is not seen. Okay, now it has come. Okay. Yes. Uh, sir, the patient's uh, MRI brain was normal. However, uh, there was presence of primary malignant mass arising from D4 vertebral body with soft tissue component in extramedullary intradural and extradural compartment extending from D3 to D5 uh, vertebral body level and had extension into right paravertebral space for which uh, uh, possibilities of primary vertebral lymphoma metastasis was kept. Okay, you want to fill him? Fill him. You have the plates. Uh, the plates were uh, difficult uh, to visualize. Okay. So you don't have the plates? Yes, sir. And uh, what about the thorax in that uh, the lesion is confined to vertebra alone or it is not uh, uh, any thoracic mass uh, uh, protruding to vertebra or vice versa? Uh, sir, from uh, the MRI spine picture alone, it was difficult to differentiate whether there was a primary thoracic mass which was uh, uh, intruding into the spinal cord. However, there was definite evidence of uh, extra medullary uh, uh, mass which was present inside the spinal cord. The yeah, spinal cord section, you'll get chest section also. Now you'll get uh, some section of uh, some part of the chest also because uh, our skin's tumor, some other tumor, chest wall, you will get a protruding into the thorax and you'll get a similar picture. What is the level of vertebrae you mentioned? Abhis Abhishek, you have any presentation now? Uh, no, sir. No, sir. Okay. Mm -hmm. No presentation. You can stop sharing and I think we can uh, discuss. Yes. Which level? Vertebral level? They mentioned uh, D3 to D5 vertebral level. So is it a correspond to your clinical findings, sir? Uh, so the patient had a patchy asymmetrical involvement, sir. It was difficult to correlate with the MRI findings in the patient. What about the upper limb finding? Uh, uh, sir, from the MRI report alone, it would be difficult to correlate with the areflexia that the patient was having along with the, uh, uh, the MRI picture. Uh, uh, anyway, I think uh, what I will suggest 
in this type of the situation, go back and examine the patient in details again. It is possible that whatever we have put our impression of the findings may get changed. That is very, very important, which we should go in the details. The reason is, you know, that uh, discrepancy of the clinical findings on upper limbs and lower limbs, very difficult to explain even after this MRI. Because the reason is, you know, any suppose spinal cord tumor patient presents. The spinal cord tumor, we all of us know that it can be either the intramedullary or extramedullary. Extramedullary can again, it can be the extradural or intradural. And, and we specific the tumor will present in a different way, having the very and very difficult to digest. The sensory system was totally normal. I mean, this type of the extensive lesion, I think the neurologist will agree with me that a totally sensory system normal, very difficult. And even the discrepancy of findings of reflex and hyperreflexia is also so. It happens so, you know, clinical medicine is quite different. No person is faulty. The only thing that we have to assert the findings and then we have to go for uh, correlation. We can it's, try to fix the findings that, that yeah. means because of at the level of lesion, you have a kind of element lesion, your reflex arc is gone because of a cord injury to cord. And because long track have survived, and there's a pressure you are getting the uh, brisk reflexes and tone, etc. But I, I think that's where, and even with the lesion, uh, these kind of lesions, they would have kind of neck stiffness or uh, SLR dysphagia or something because your meninges are fixed and they're not allow, they don't allow nerve roots and other things to move. But, and I think that's where, I think it was a very good case. Uh, he did very good for the, uh, for as a second year PG or even a third year PG. But uh, Abhishek, when these things are complex and you have kind of contracted findings, you, as an upfront, you try to put other exemption findings to support your point. It's not an easy case. Definitely, this is a case of, you can say, for the DM or a DNB. This is not the standard PG case. So you're doing very good for that point of view. But then people sitting on the other side who don't know the patient, we always think for the common things. Is this GBS? Uh, is this some an, an, I means neurotropic or enterovirus and then causing some neuropathy, uh, transverse malitis, uh, maybe bad stroke, I means spinal arteries, uh, occlusion, something, uh, or a straightforward ceiling or something. So we think for common things only first. And that's why I think you have to make sure uh, that your findings, if they're not matching and they're complex, then you try to put things uh, in a slightly different way. But you did very good for uh, yeah. overall, uh, very good. Anyway, I think uh, it's uh, time for us to find out. Before we go, any comments from Dr. Anand? Yeah, our address not only to Abhishek, and there are so many other students also there. Yes. And the first thing is that you also, in your help, I already told, I want the names of five students. <laughs> but okay, there are nobody to help Abhishek. Anyway, <laughs> Abhishek presented well, but that um, you see, uh, I don't know whether he a little bit biased or something like that. Right? Anyway, the uh, finest almost uh, um, to uh, good findings and uh, justified uh, presented well. Uh, and also Meda Prajapati also uh, only she helped you and. Uh, uh, it made a very good presentation, good experience uh, to uh, sit together with uh, Pradabdi sir and uh, my friend uh, Nidish Mora. And uh, thank you, Nyakal Madam. Thank you. Sir, sir um, one thing to ask. Uh, sir, uh, as there is lymphoma now uh, and it is causing uh, spasticity because of compressions, uh, and uh, is there is a possibility of a secondary demyelination to the underlying tumor? as it is seen in uh, paraneoplastic syndromes are associated with uh, tumors causing secondary demyelination of CNS. So that can maybe explain the findings in upper sure. limb. But, uh, but in that case, Meda, I would not expect uh, uh -huh. normal tone, normal power. This child has a, as per what has been described, has a perfectly normal tone in power. 
and even sensation normal. So that would, so demolition, so I think it's mainly problem with the, I think, anterior horn cell region where your signal, your arc is not being completed. But clinically, your both nerves are normal. But uh, but this is very important case. And uh, uh, I do take your point, Medha. Especially, I wanted to make some different uh, comment, uh, especially for you uh, being a post-MD. Uh, uh, we have National AOPN Neurology Fellowship for two years, which is IP accredited, national accredited. And uh, we are definitely looking for students from Gujarat to join. So, uh, we have quite a few seats uh, in Gujarat as well now. But uh, unfortunately, so far, none of the Gujarat candidates have uh, passed through or uh, passed the uh, even the break-even marks. So definitely, Mehta, you can be a very good candidate if you're interested. And Abhishek, of course, in, in future for you as well. Thank you so much, sir. Whether you confirm lymphoma by MRI alone or biopsy? Uh, sir, can you repeat a question again? I did not. No, uh, you mentioned about some lymphoma. It is confirmed by uh, MRI findings alone or you are done biopsy? Uh, sir, biopsy... Yeah, my, uh, how do you confirm it is a lymphoma? Uh, sir, they have uh, given up a uh, possibility of lymphoma. MRI put, na, MRI put, na. I think uh, I may not be... Okay. <clears throat> Marie. Anyway, I think uh, we'll have to end over here. First, uh, as uh, everybody said, Abhi said, to stand before all the people is the, I will say, great ovation to the presenter. Definitely, that is the first thing. And of course, your mentor, I will say, Charan, for selection of the case. What even I, I want to convey to all the students, you can see that even the Teachers after 35, 40 years or the neurologist, we are not able to answer everything correctly. So the, it happens in the medicine. Don't bother. The only thing that you should be able to participate in the discussion. I think so many students I could see on the screen, but uh, somehow their active participation was lacking. I understand always the hesitation is there to the people even after the seniority also. So it's a physiological phenomenon I will consider. But at some time we'll have to break it. At least participate. This is not the exam. On the contrary, this will be the good opportunity. Whatever we believe may be right or wrong. But uh, participation is very important. I'm sure that the students will take in a proper perspective. And of course, Abhishek, as I say, uh, of course, uh, you know that the sure we are not able to put even the neurological findings also perfectly to explain the anatomy. Very difficult and it happens with the medicine. Medicine, every time it's not one and one, one plus one. It happens even. Many times the round we, we understand. Several times I have found even, sometimes I have explained for one hour on one particular condition, so dogmatically that it should be diagnosed and next day everything gets changed. So it happens in the medicine, no problem. But the only thing that at one particular point when we are trying to explain our logic, our science, our explanation, our understanding should be on the right way. That's the medicine. And I think that's the thing which I wish that everybody should take uh, in that perspective and participate with the students. Exam, nobody wants the diagnosis. Everybody knows the diagnosis in the exam. But knowing the diagnosis, the purpose is not solved. How you are putting the, your, I will say, your history and examination and ultimately interpretation, that is more important. And for that reason, multiple times presentations, multiple times participation in the discussion, as Aditi made at least in between, whenever she got the time, I would appreciate. So like that, I think all other students should be. Of course, as uh, Medha, I, I, I'm sure that now you must be free after passing the MBA examination because stress of uh, dissertation and exams and everything is over. So you can very freely participate everywhere. And I'm sure that uh, that will be the good contribution in the discussion. Uh, I appreciate uh, Dr. Charul even for promoting the students to preparing them for presentation. And that is a you know, difficult job, but I'm sure that she is able to manage any difficult job. So she will continue. And of course, Dr. Nihal is Thank doing you, continuously one managing all of us. And every week she's giving the good case for the discussion and learning. So 
Thank you very much. And all the office bearers, those who are behind the curtain, but contributing a lot in this uh, teaching learning session. Thank you very much. Over to you, Dr. Deha. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, as sir has thanked already everybody, everyone, <laughs> there is nothing left for me. But uh, thank you again, both the experts, Nitish Bhai and uh, Anand Keshwan, sir. The students who took part in and those who has not take part in, I wish that they will take part again in the discussion. Thank you, Charul Ben, for preparing Abhishek. Uh, Charul Ben pinged me up in uh, uh, before three days at night 10.30 that my case is ready. <laughs> and I was happy that it, it's good that somebody is coming up from front that the case is ready. I must say, sir, Abhishek always takes challenges. He That's selected good. this case. Otherwise, the PG students take the case, which is very simple. And the diagnosis is reached easily by the findings. Yes, yes. But he is known to take challenges. He was the uh, zonal quiz winner last year. And this time, they were runner-up. So, uh, I must congratulate Abhishek. You are really a taking challenge person. And uh, good. Keep it up. Thank so, you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Baldev, sir, sir for always guiding comment. us. Nehal Ben, yes, I would uh, take a few minutes here. Sir, it is my pleasure to attend uh, your session every time. So when Nehal Ben, just was, she was asking who is going to be there. So I came up with this case. We were also not very ready because as uh, this case was, I mean, patient was admitted just last week only. And we were coming up with uh, so much... Uh, you know, newer findings every time Abhishek would come up with, ma'am, now it is this and now it is that. So, like, it was also, also a learning for us. Yeah, that, everybody. Uh, it is a, you no. Know, and we have many such cases during vacation time. Diwali vacation, we get lots of such patients referred and transferred from other institutes. So, we are we're ready with few more cases coming next week. Yeah, I will, I, I will request Charul all to you and your students, keep the all cases ready, take one by one, and we'll yes, take sir. all the cases. Yes, and we'll sir. Definitely, Definitely, sir. Definitely, sir. Thank so you. Over to you, Nehal Ben. Thank you so much. And thank, thank you, you, Clarinet, thank for providing uh, yes. us the platform. Good and time. I will share all the certificates uh, with you personally, with you all personally. Yeah. Thank you so much.